This is NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Whelan and by Hercules Tires. Now, with a look at local, regional, and international NASCAR racing, here are Hannah Newhouse and Kyle Rickey. Here on the Motor Racing Network, it is Wednesday, September 11th, and I am Hannah Newhouse here in MRN's Concord location, joined always by Kyle Rickey up in Connecticut. And Kyle, it's been a solid week or so since you've seen me. Did did you miss having me as a co-host? I know we had Davey fill in for me, who did an awesome job, but I'm back. Yeah, Davey did a great job last week, and I'm glad you are back. In fact, I believe we had you on the show last week uh, <laughs> as you were preparing for a big week. First in Indianapolis, uh, running or, or uh, watching uh, Dylan run the BC39, a fantastic event. And then you traveled to Idaho to uh, get back in the car yourself. You ran twin 100 lappers. At your home track, Meridian Speedway, how did your return to the seat go on Saturday night? Well, I would say it went a lot better than I expected, in all honesty. Um, We had pretty generic goals of top 10, load the race car in the trailer with all the fenders on it. It's been three years since I've been behind the wheel of a super late model. So ultimately, we just wanted to go and have fun with our family, with our old crew. And man, two 100 lappers to just jump back in a super. I was a little nervous about that, a little, little rusty, but... Um, they went well above expectations. Our first race, we finished seventh after blowing a right rear tire, um, had to go in, get a practice tire on the right rear. And that was just not fun to try and handle on that quarter mile. So rallied to a seventh finish and knew that we had a good car for the second race and came home with a podium finish. We got third in that second 100 lapper. So all around, everyone was really content with the weekend. It was a lot of fun to get back behind the wheel and, and race. I did not fall out of the seat. There was one stretch though where it was a solid 40-lap green flag, and I was like, oh, my goodness, we need a caution so bad because Hannah hasn't done this in a while. It was it was rough, <laughs> but but I heard you actually tried to watch but uh, fell asleep during my race. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Well, well, I mean, what, what was it, two red flags in the second race? And then <laughs> and West Coast like time. <laughs> three feature events between the first super late model feature and the second super late model feature and boy can they drag their feet there sometimes between those feature events so yeah i mean it (laughs) it got late in a hurry on saturday night and kyle's getting old yeah it's okay i don't blame you there was a couple other people that i woke up to the text messages of congratulations on that third because it was i think you said 145 or something when they finally finished everything up um out on the west coast so that's definitely definitely some confusion there but Aside from my racing, there was also some racing in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour that took place at Riverhead for the 13th race of the season. It came down to the two home track boys, Timmy Salamito and Justin Bonsignor, battling for that win. And it was Justin Bonsignor that was able to take the lead in the closing laps from Timmy Salamito, who led, uh, I believe, 44, 45 laps on Saturday night. A lot of folks thought he was going to get his first win of the season finally with that Flamingo Motorsports team. But unfortunately for him, he had to settle for second. Justin Bonsignor picking up the race win, his fifth of the season, 25th career win in his 150th start. So uh, Bonsignor now suddenly is right back in the hunt for the championship because while Justin had a good night, we can't say the same for Doug Kobe, who had not one but two incidents. Yeah, Doug Kobe, after those incidents, did come home 15th, I believe. Not somewhere that your points leader wants to be with only those three races left. And Bonsignor not only had a good night, he got to add to those statistics that you were also just talking about. Fourth straight win at Riverhead in the Tour. The first driver to ever do that in the Tour at that Long Island racetrack. So he's just racking up records and, like you said, really put himself in those point contentions. So it'll be interesting with... The Musket 250 up next for the Tour. How this really battles out between those two. Just 19 points separate uh, Doug Kobe, the point leader, Justin Bonsignor in second. Two races ago, it was 45 points. So um, Justin has plenty of time left. He'll need to do well, and Doug will have to have another misfortune on the racetrack. But yeah, four in a row at Riverhead, where a lot of people call that kind of like... um, a wild card race, um, kind of like what we talked about in Daytona and Talladega for the Cup Series. Because it is a quarter mile and because there's 30 cars zipping around that racetrack, anything can happen. And Justin has just figured something out. And Justin likes to get on these streaks. You know, he won, what, six in a row at Thompson. Now he's on four in a row at his home track in Riverhead. So uh, look forward to talking to him about that race here in a couple minutes. Yeah, absolutely. And also some big news recently out of Martinsville Speedway. We had Clay Campbell on recently to talk about the big late model race coming up. But we're also going to have Tim Southers on the show, who was recently announced as director of communications over at Martinsville. 
Tim Southers, if you don't know him, has an extensive late model background, an extensive short track background as well, and has now made the transition over to a PR role at Martinsville Speedway. It's going to be cool to have someone like Tim really integrated into one of NASCAR's greatest short tracks. Yeah, I mean, and that's all he knows is short tracks. And this is the perfect role at the perfect facility for Tim, who grew up at the Hickory Motor Speedway in North Carolina, used to work there, used to work at the um, the Hooters Pro Cup Series way back in the day when that series was first getting off the ground, which predominantly ran short tracks. And, of course, he has worked with NASCAR as well in the public relations department. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what Tim can do and, and how he can create some excitement more so, and I'm not sure if that's possible at the Martinsville Speedway, as he gets this job going into, no doubt, their busiest stretch of the season with the late model race coming up in a couple of weeks. And then just two weeks after that, the uh, NASCAR weekend with the Gander Trucks and the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. So he's a busy boy right now. Look forward to seeing how he is settling in to NASCAR's oldest facility. And we'll talk to him a little bit later in the show. But first, when we return from the break, we'll have this past weekend's winner, Justin Bonsignor, here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Wheeland designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Wheeland product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Wheeland is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. It wasn't just built to be a museum. It was built to be a shrine to the history, heritage, and future of the sport we love. Visit the NASCAR Hall of Fame and see how Petty, Earnhardt, and hundreds of other NASCAR legends became heroes. Watch their most electrifying moments, experience realistic racing simulators, and much more. Plan a trip to the NASCAR Hall of Fame in Charlotte. Tickets at NASCARHall.com. NASCAR Hall of Fame. This is our sport. This is our house. This is Sarah's O'Reilly Auto Parts story. Driving cross-country with two young children is ambitious, to say the least. Then our check engine light came on. We pulled into O'Reilly Auto Parts, and they tested it. Turned out it was a faulty sensor. They referred us to a great mechanic just down the street, and we were back on the road in no time. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Back to NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Whelan and by Hercules Tires. Here are Hannah Newhouse and Kyle Rickey. The NASCAR Whelan Modified Tour took on Riverhead Raceway this past weekend for race 13 of the season. The short track up in Long Island and Justin Bonsignor collected the fourth straight win at that racetrack for him. And we've got him on the guest line now. Justin, thanks for coming on NASCAR Coast to Coast and congratulations on yet another win this season. Hey, guys, thanks for having me on. It's uh, always a pleasure to come on and talk to you guys. Now, you started this spree over at Thompson. We saw you get multiple wins in a row, specifically at that racetrack. That's now transferred over to Riverhead, becoming the first NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour driver to set that four-streak win at that racetrack. How cool is it to not only get your name in the record book with these wins and championships, but you're doing something that no other driver in the Tour has ever done? Yeah, I mean, it's been amazing uh, this last, uh, it's just short of two years here with with Ryan Stone and and our race team since we made the big switch and um, you know we were able to have that streak of six in a row at Thompson. Unfortunately, that just ended uh, a couple weeks ago, but uh, you know not from lack of effort. We ran second that night and uh, obviously came home back to Riverhead with a shot to um, break a tie with uh, just two great drivers. You know, Mike Uninsko is uh, you know amazing talent that's now retired and. And Ryan Priest had uh, both had a streak of three in a row at Riverhead, and we were all tied together. And to uh, to now have that record at Riverhead is pretty amazing. And uh, to break a, a tie with those type of guys is really special. So um, just a lot of history there, and uh, it's things like that that you'll appreciate once you're you know you're done racing. You can look back on and and talk to your friends about and and just reminisce and enjoy stuff like that. Now, for many, Riverhead. Considered a bit of a wild card. It's a tight quarter mile racetrack, 30 car, 30 cars zipping around that place. Anything can happen and, and usually does. We saw several yellows the other night. How have you been able to, to keep this streak going? I mean, you're always at the front of the field and I guess that's probably part of it, but uh, you know, four in a row, uh, obviously unheard of until this year. What's the secret? Uh, I mean, 
just great race cars more than anything. Obviously, I have a lot of laps, and I'm really comfortable at Riverhead. But, uh, you know, Ryan and, and the whole team have brought really good cars uh, during this two-year stretch. And, um, you know, it's just so much of putting yourself in the right positions at the right times. Um, qualifying has been important, obviously. I don't think we've qualified off, off the front row during this streak. I think we've got one pole and, and three seconds there during this streak as far as qualifying. And um, you just got to keep yourself up front and, and keep the tires under it and know – when and when not to push the issue. Um, you know, the tires burn off the car pretty quick at Riverhead, so it's a, it's a tire management game late in the race. And um, our cars have been able to keep the forward drive in them the longest, I feel, during during the stretch of runs that we've had. And, um, you know, there's been long green flag runs on top of numerous restarts and cautions. So it's like a mix of everything. Um, but um, more than anything, I think the just good race cars and you know, having the experience of the ins and outs of the track and just being comfortable there doesn't hurt either. Riverhead, one of those racetracks you obviously, like you said, you guys have really hit on. You've got a lot of laps there, though, and it came down to you and Salamito, those last handful of laps. Two home track boys battling it out. You cut your teeth there. Was a little bit, was that race a little nostalgic for you getting to battle back with Timmy? Yeah, I mean, every, it seems like every time we go there, it's um, it's been between the two of us over the last bunch of years. I think between the two of us now, we've won 10 in a row at Riverhead, uh, and that's pretty special. I think that's the number. Um, so, you know, every time you go there, uh, he's going to be one of the guys you got to beat and probably the guy to beat. Um, you know, they've been struggling a little bit uh, as of late, but anytime he comes home, he's he's right back at the front and um, battling for the win. It looked like um, through the middle stages of the race, he kind of was in the same mode as us, just kind of saving his tires. And then he was able to get the lead, and uh, I, I got the second. And we started to run him down, 30 or 40 to go, I think it was. And um, I got to his bumper, but we were just about into heavy lap traffic. And I was, you know, trying to size him up and wondering how, how I'm going to make the move on them. And Riverhead's kind of changed over the last few years. They've started using the PJ1, and uh, over this past off season, they paved the, the corner in three and four. So the groove and, and all the little tricks and, you know, little secrets that we knew, knew about as kids growing up racing there have kind of gone away. So um, it, it's like a new racetrack almost. And, um, you know, luckily we got a, a late restart, and he chose the bottom, and I was able to get the outside, and I got a really good start and kind of able to pin him down and keep him tight and get his car you know, um, you know, in a position where I could kind of control the, the lane and I was able to clear him on the restart and was hoping from there we'd just go green the last 10 or so. Uh, but unfortunately, we pretty much had two back-to-back green-white checkers and uh, we were leaning on each other and bouncing on, bouncing bars and it was just, um, you know, one of those other crazy riverhead races. Um, but at the end of the night, you know, we were parked next to each other and we were sharing laughs and, and talking about how good of a race it was for the fans. So um, it, was, uh, it was fun to battle with them. Uh, it's tough to beat somebody that you've raced against all your life and and they know all your little tricks, and I know all his little tricks. So it just makes it even tougher, but um, it's always special when you can beat somebody like him that you know is uh, one of the best at Riverhead. Your eighth win at Riverhead, fourth in a row, as Hannah mentioned a moment ago. The win came in your 150th start. Your first start also at Riverhead Raceway, August 4th, 2007. Do you remember much of that day? Uh, Obviously, your home racetrack and your modified debut. (laughs) Yeah, I, I do remember quite well. We um, we ran well. I think it was those flash races where we had to run the heat races and everything. And uh, I think we qualified mid-pack. We got in. We didn't uh, obviously had no provisionals. It was just a one-off. Uh, we were local trying to make the show in those days. And um, we qualified in the, maybe the front half of the top 15, I think, and uh, ran well. And I really had no – that was only my second year racing. I'd just come back from a, a bad wrist injury, so I was out most of that season anyways. And um, We – we we muscled our way up to the top five. I think I ended up finishing fourth in my first career start, and um, that was pretty cool to, to race against the guys uh, Teddy and and Stefanik and just all the the top guys back then. It was uh, it was pretty cool to to run up front and, and outrun some of them. That was pretty special. And then uh, we actually backed it up again in in '09 with another fourth place finish. So um, those were pretty cool accomplishments with the family owned team that we had. Now looking forward, only three races remain in the 2019 season for the tour. We talked about it a little bit earlier. You've closed that points gap. You were able to capitalize this past weekend on Kobe's misfortune there. 19 points separate the two of you. How do you approach these next couple races, especially one like the Musket 250 that's next on the schedule where it's somewhat of a wild card, but you've seen consistent runs there? First, I just want to say that you made it through the whole Riverhead segment without calling it Riverside. So I know. I'm, really, I'm really so proud, bad about proud that. For that. Um, but, you know, all kidding aside, yeah, we... <laughs> We've had two really good weeks here in a row. Obviously, we went to Victory Lane two weeks in a row. So um, the best way to points race is to 
you know, get wins, and we've gotten max points the last two weeks. So, um, you know, we've we've taken a big chunk out of it. We're we're not out of it by any means. Either is Silk. He's he's still within within striking distance of both of us. So, um, you know, Riverhead was a wild card. Obviously, we know going into there, anything can happen. Um, but same thing with the musket race uh, next week. It's you know, it's a long race. You never know what type of attrition might might come of it. And then just the fact of New Hampshire in general with our cars produces some of the craziest finishes uh in any type of race and as we all saw last year on the last lap you know we could run around there for 249 and three quarter laps and we could still lose everything in in one corner so um it's exciting i'm excited uh you know we're back in it you know we we had a tough start to the year wasn't sure if we'd get back to this point but uh you know they're going to be tough they're they're the best team for a reason here you know there's a reason he's won five championships and um it's not going to be an easy task to gain 19 points on them, but um, you know, right now we got some momentum on our side. Our car's been fast all year. We just got to keep capitalizing on on all the, the the momentum we have right now and keep it rolling through the end of the year and just try and keep them on their toes if possible. But like I said, they're they're a professional team. They they know what they need to do to win this deal, and um, we're just we're going to go down swinging as hard as we can. When the Musket 250 was announced last spring or summer, I believe at New Hampshire, a lot there was a lot of questions. 250 laps for the modifieds. Never been done before at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. What kind of a race are we going to see? Um, obviously, we can't see all these lead changes that we usually see. And in fact, you had, I believe, 30 lead changes. The Cup Cars record there for 300 laps is 23 lead changes. You had five or six cars finish on the lead lap. What was the big takeaway for you last year, that first time around? What did you learn that you might be able to apply next week when we race 250 laps again at the Magic Mile? Uh, there's there's a lot to to take from the first one and, and try and improve on. Um, you know, obviously, uh, we've never done green flag pit stops in our series for for fuel or any any anything for that matter. So just trying to capitalize on on minimizing your time on pit road and and being uh, efficient and and not having any mistakes on pit road. Have, make sure the pit crew guys uh, have the same thoughts. Just you know, do your job. You know, get back out there. Um, there's no intermission this year at all, so that kind of throws a little different dynamic as far as fuel strategy. Um, but uh, it's it's tough with the green flag stops, and you know hopefully we can just get kind of like we did last year in the beginning half of that race, get a few cars together. Hopefully we're one of them and, and kind of check out and and just kind of ride around there and log laps. Uh, unfortunately, there's no lap money this year, so it might be a little calmer up front. But uh, you still you know it, it pays points to lead laps, and those are just as you know those are very important this time of year. So um, I think at the end of the day, it's still it's going to come down to a late caution that's going to bunch up everybody, and we're going to get in that huge pack like we did last year, and, and it'll you know be exciting as all hell like it usually is. So um, you just got to position yourself in the right spot, and then if you're the leader or you're second, you just have to guess what the right move is going to be on that last lap down the back straightaway. And um, unless it goes green, it's always going to come down to one of those late cautions that bunches us all up and and puts us into that crazy mode where guys are dicing it back and forth so you can have 15 different plans uh going into the race five more during it and you know off of turn two on the last lap it's still a split second decision on what's the right or wrong move to make to try and win the race unfortunately we will be in richmond that weekend uh with the network but thank goodness for fans choice tv because that's a race that i mean i've seen it time and time again the last two years it just always produces such a great finish but again congratulations on your win this past weekend justin Best of luck these next couple races. It's going to be an exciting season for sure. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, it's uh, always exciting on a modified tour, and you know we got ourselves a point battle right now. So uh, I'm sure the fans will be out in the bus loads the rest of the year to see who comes out on top and you know see who wins these next three races. But it should be fun, and uh, we're excited to be a part of it. And hopefully we can uh, do our jobs and, and get back to victory lane a few more times and hopefully hoist that championship trophy. Awesome. Well, best of luck, and thanks for coming on. Thanks, guys. That was Justin Bonsignor, the winner this past weekend at Riverhead Raceway in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour and part of the championship chase in the tour for this season. But when we return, we'll have Tim Southers, the new director of communications over at Martinsville. Here's your chance to win a set of your very own Hercules tires. Go to HerculesTires.com slash MRN. Simply register, and each month we'll give away one set of tires. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading mileage coverage to get you wherever you need to go, no matter where the road takes you. Register now for your chance to win a set of Hercules tires at HerculesTires.com slash MRN. Hercules Tires, ride on our street. 
Whelan designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Whelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Whelan is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. Some people hear air guns, but for us, it's the sound of time running out. Every millisecond counts. One wrong move and Eric Johns isn't getting his first cup win. Get it just right? It's all part of the championship. So if you haven't just been listening, the counting the seconds, your family now. 2018 was a great season for the Toyota Racing family. Buckle up for 2019. Follow us at toyotaracing.com. Toyota, let's go places. NASCAR is a registered trademark for the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing, Inc. Back to NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Whelan and by Hercules Tires. Here are Hannah Newhouse and Kyle Rickey. We recently saw some news out of Martinsville Speedway as someone joined the team over there as Director of Communications, and we've got him on the guest line now. Tim Southers joins us. Tim, first off, thanks for coming on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Oh, thank you so much, Hannah. I really appreciate being here. Congratulations on your new position, Director of Communications. And for those who may not know what that position may entail, tell us a little bit about your new job over at the Speedway. Well, basically, I'll be uh, working closely with uh, Karen Parker, our Vice President of Marketing, and, of course, Clay Campbell, the track president, working with uh, just handling all all inter- interaction with the media, dealing with, uh, obviously, our fans that come here and want to experience uh, an event weekend at Martinsville Speedway and uh, just trying to help make you guys' job a little bit easier when you come up here and, and give us some great coverage through MRN for all our events at Martinsville Speedway and uh, just looking forward to it. My second day on the job, so I'm still getting my feet wet, so to speak. <laughs> Tim, this seems like, uh, and I've known you for a number of years, the perfect role at the perfect track for you, somebody that's been around short track racing all your professional life at the Hickory Motor Speedway and back in the old Hooters Pro Cup Series. I mean, is it me or does this seem almost like the perfect fit for you? You're exactly right, Kyle. I couldn't ask for a better situation to come into right now. And with my background and my history, I mean, short tracks have always been my first love. And I love all types of racing. But, yeah, I grew up on the short tracks. And as you said, I cut my teeth at Hickory Motor Speedway. I told a good friend of mine uh, when I was actually packing up to move up here last week, he said, well, you know, is it going to feel like being at Hickory? I said, no, it would be like being at Hickory on steroids, so to speak, at Martinsville. (laughs) And, uh, and, uh, you know, you're right, Kyle. I couldn't ask for a better situation. And, uh, you know, this track has such a great history and tradition and and being a part. I mean, it's been a part of NASCAR since the beginning. And to be able to be such a a small piece of that to help keep that moving forward and into uh, bringing this great short track uh, exposure into a whole new generation of young fans and even the old school fans who still love coming to a short track, just to be a part of that is a privilege. And I I can't wait to get our late model stock or our late model race underway here October the 5th and then come back for the Cup weekend in trucks. Uh, later in October. And you'd mentioned it was your second day on the job today. You jumped into one of the probably the busiest parts of the season. You'd mentioned that late model stock race October 5th right around the corner. We've also got a cup schedule or a cup date race right around the corner as well. Is there a little bit of feeling of overwhelmment knowing that all of this is right around the corner and we don't even need to get into 2020 yet with everything exciting happening there? Oh, I know. I mean, and, and and Kyle can appreciate this. I'm I'm already looking forward to the modifieds coming back here in May, and and I can't even have time to enjoy that because I've got to make sure we get everything done. If you, if you guys aren't busy, just come on up here. I'll, I'll put you to work for the next couple of days if you got a little bit of time. Of course, Hannah, you're all over the place. Yeah, so Kyle's got lots that. of free time. <laughs> but we'll wow. get Kyle. We'll put Kyle to work. He needs something to do anyway. <laughs> Kyle's got a couple modified races to go to, but I was going to talk about that later in 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 the 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 interview. I mean, not once you get through the next month or so, I guess next six weeks when you get through the Gander Truck Weekend and the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Weekend at the end of October, then you look ahead to a very exciting 2020, the return of the NASCAR Xfinity Series. You go Cup racing under the lights. And yes, you mentioned the return of the NASCAR Wheel and Modify Tour. I guess what's the early strategy? I don't know if you've had much time to think about 2020 yet for, for next season. 
Well, Kyle, you can appreciate this. I've had a lot of my modified friends when I used to work the modified, the Wheeling Modified Tour and the Wheeling Southern Modified Tour from when I was at NASCAR. I've had quite a few modified drivers already reach out to me. Doug Cubby's like, okay, I expect to be put to work, or, you know, I'm looking forward to talking to you. And uh, uh, Andy Sice, uh, Burt Myers, all those guys reached out to me and said, oh, they could, it's great going to have a guy who loves modifieds up there working. And, uh, you know, we're going to, you know, after we get done with these races in October, of course, we got a great event coming up here. October the 5th and and uh, but once we get done with that yeah it's going to be uh, all moving forward 110 percent getting ready for the f- uh, spring races of course it's going to be on Mother's Day weekend and what more do you need to say other than Martinsville under the lights with the cup series for the first time ever I mean that that right there is going to uh, it's going to create a lot of excitement just making that statement but to bring the modifieds back and so many people love the modifieds here at Martinsville and the history of the modified series uh, the Wheeling Modified Series here at uh, Martinsville is second to none. And, I mean, our buddy, our NASCAR Hall of Fame member, Jerry Cook's already texted me and like, okay, uh, I expect to see you at the Modified race next May. So uh, we're we're looking forward to that. But well, let's get through these first couple of events here in the fall, and we'll be ready to go. Moms and Modifieds. That's your slogan right there. We've got it. We're already working on it. But you know, I'm I'm putting you to work right now. That's great. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, it's all working out. No, that'll be exciting. I mean, we, I talked about it last fall, actually, at the late model stock race. We had that long red flag, and we got to, you know, talking about it. And I said, let's get modifieds here because I had never – it was really my first introduction in the last two years to the Tour Type Mods, and I've fallen in love with them, and Kyle, you know, holds that to me. But um, it'll be cool to see them. Lots of stuff going on in 2020. But I want to take a step away from Martinsville, actually, just for a second uh, – I've seen you at a lot of short track races, but a place I did not recently expect you to see is at the E-NASCAR Heat Pro League. We ran into each other there. You've been very involved with them over there. I call the races if you guys haven't actually tuned in and seen those races before. What was your first initial reaction going in and seeing the whole production that goes into the E-NASCAR Heat Pro League? Well, you know, Hannah, when I uh, was at motorsport.com and then they bought into 704 games and then they moved me over there to help out. And actually, I'm uh, today I'm still helping out as we speak at night <laughs> during this week of transition because we actually have the launch of NASCAR Heat 4 coming out on Friday. Uh, so I'm still helping out. But, yeah, I was very impressed with the, uh, first of all, the commitment by uh, NASCAR, the uh, RTA, and 704 games to really uh, produce a high-quality broadcast of these uh, eNASCAR Heat Pro League races and uh, of course having you on there has certainly made it a great broadcast as well and uh, that, that, that's some serious business I, one thing I've learned the short time I was over there helping out in the gaming industry uh, the gaming community there is fanatical and is diehard and dedicated to the fan as a NASCAR fan is if not more in some ways and uh, they're on top of that and they're really involved in it the drivers have taken this all seriously of course they're actually team members of the teams that drafted them and I mean this is serious business and uh you know i I just wrote a pre-race story that's going to be posted tonight for the race tomorrow night and uh fans uh, viewers are going to be able to watch nascar heat four for the first time in action uh with the race tomorrow night but i was very impressed with the the overall structure of the league the level of competition that we have with those drivers that are competing in the league and just the commitment by everyone to make this a top-notch production it's very very well done and if, if listeners out there haven't had a chance to watch a race i certainly invite them to tune in tomorrow night to watch that race so you've done a little bit of everything, Tim. Uh, you've done the big track stuff with your role at NASCAR, a lot of short track stuff, the e-racing stuff, uh, and obviously uh, a lot of work at the Hickory Motor Speedway. What got you into motorsports originally all those years ago? Well, you know, one of the things, I started out being a school teacher. I wanted to be a teacher athletic trainer, and I, I was fortunate enough to get to do a lot of neat things in college, uh, travel with sports teams. I worked with the Charlotte Hornets during their first uh, uh, first team that they had, the first season in Charlotte, and uh, did an internship there and was really exposed to a lot of great things with stick and ball sports, but I always loved racing. I mean, my uncle used to take me to Hickory Motor Speedway. I'll never forget, I was there the night Bobby Isaac, unfortunately, uh, collapsed with heat exhaustion then went to the hospital and later had a heart attack. But I grew up going to the racetrack and always loved racing, but knew with my leg issue that I never could, you know, I never would be a racer, but I always loved the sport. And I was actually teaching school and working as an athletic trainer. And Steve Adams was the race director at Hickory Motor Speedway. And he came over and 
we would, he would watch football practice, and I'd be over on the sidelines working on kids who have been injured. And we just struck up a conversation, and you know me well enough. I think both of you know me well enough. I never meet a stranger and not scared to talk. So uh, we struck up a conversation and just started talking about racing. And then he said, well, listen, I don't have uh, don't have uh, much I can pay you, but I'd really need a scoreboard operator. So uh, if you want to come up here and operate the scoreboard at Hickory, I can pay you $10, give you a Coke and uh, or a Pepsi, and give you a hot dog and a hamburger. And I said, hey, I'm there. And so that I started doing that. Then I wound up writing for the local newspaper covering the races. And then one thing led to another. I worked my way up to general manager at the track. And I guess you could say, as they say, the rest is history, so to speak. And all roads apparently lead to Martinsville Speedway. Not a bad place to end up. But, Tim, we look forward to seeing you in uh, just a short month or so for the late model stock race. And, of course, for many races to come at Martinsville. Again, congratulations. And we appreciate you coming on Coast to Coast. Oh, thank you so much, guys. Talk to you soon. Hey, thank you. That was Tim Southers, new director of communications over at Martinsville Speedway. But when we return here on NASCAR Coast to Coast, we'll recap this past weekend's racing and what to look forward to this up and coming weekend. Wheelin designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Wheelin product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Wheelin is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. Right now at O'Reilly Auto Parts, pick up two five and a quarter ounce bottles of Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner for eight dollars. Clean and lubricate your fuel system while increasing miles per gallon with two bottles of Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner for eight dollars at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh oh oh! O'Reilly Auto Parts. It wasn't just built to be a museum. It was built to be a shrine to the history, heritage, and future of the sport we love. This is our house, the NASCAR Hall of Fame, and it's packed full of classic and present-day cars, including Petties, Earnhardts, and Waltrips, as well as interactive experiences, realistic racing simulators, and much more. Plan a trip to the NASCAR Hall of Fame in Charlotte. Tickets at NASCARHall.com. NASCAR Hall of Fame. This is our sport. This is our house. Back to NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Whelan and by Hercules Tires. Here are Hannah Newhouse and Kyle Rickey. We talked earlier in the show how the NASCAR Whelan Modified Tour went to Riverhead Raceway and Justin Bonds, New York, collected that win. But also the NASCAR Pinty Series was in action this past weekend at Autodrome St. Estache, where qualifying was rained out. Rain seems to be plaguing that Pinty Series this year. And Jason Hathaway collected that win. The points battle heating up as only two points separates Kevin LaCroix and Andrew Ranger. Also, Division One points starting to come to a close, Kyle Rickey. Yeah, we are into the final weekend, and it is a barn burner at the front of the field. 16 points separating the top six drivers. Our guest from last week, Nick Paninski, continues to lead. He has an eight-point lead over Philip Morris in second. Jacob Gady in third. They are tied eight points back. Fourth, ten points out of the lead is Mike Looney. And Peyton Sellers is fifth, also ten points back. And way out back, 16 points out of the lead, is Keith Rocco, who unfortunately lost an event last week at Stafford due to Mother Nature. So, it's going to be a, an incredible point battle. It's going to come down to the final weekend of racing this weekend, this Sunday, September 15th, the final week or the final day that drivers can earn points toward the national championship. And we saw a lot of uh, we saw a lot of tracks wrap their season this past weekend, including the Meridian Speedway that I was at, where Kyle Tel- Telstrom collected that late model championship. But they have one more weekend this up and coming weekend to get that last race and to get those points. Um, there's a lot of championships on the line this weekend, Kyle. Yeah, a lot of tracks wrapping up their season when the NASCAR Wheel and All American Series wraps up. Some of the race tracks will have post major events you know to kind of wrap up their season that are non-points events berlin speedway in in uh, michigan has their championship night this week of course you can watch that action on fanschoice.tv 
Riverhead Raceway has a 100 lapper for their Tour Modifieds, part of the NASCAR Wheel and All-American Series. Stafford Motor Speedway in Connecticut has their final Friday night of racing. The Seekonk Speedway also has uh, action this Saturday night. Two races to go in their championship. Evergreen Speedway in Monroe, Washington, championship night for their super late models. And Elko Speedway in Minnesota in action this week for a regular show. They have three races left in their season. Those are just some of the short tracks in action this weekend as a lot of these facilities already uh, calling it a year. Hard to believe we are already halfway through September. That being said, plenty of short track racing. Get out to your short tracks this up and coming weekend. Support the drivers that have been putting on a show all season long and support those tracks so we can expect awesome racing next year as well. But NASCAR's regional touring is off this up and coming weekend before we get into that championship stretch for a lot of them. And I actually just had to look up our work roster, Kyle, to make sure that you were coming to Las Vegas with me this weekend. I am at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. It's going to be a fun weekend with the NASCAR Gander Outdoors Truck Series. Uh, my question is, do you have a NASCAR Kane and Pro West ride for the series next event at Meridian Speedway in a couple weeks? And the funny thing is, I am actually off that weekend. I do not have any races scheduled for me to work. And oh, I, I, this is it. If you have a NASCAR Kane and Pro Series West ride for me at Meridian, I will ditch my Airbnb in Tennessee and I will come drive a Kane and car at Meridian. So that's, that's my, that's my plead for help right there. But uh, until then... Yeah, like you said, we will be at uh, Las Vegas this up and coming weekend for the trucks. Look forward to getting back out west. Man, two West Coast weekends for me. I'm going to be so messed up on the sleep schedule. We'll gamble together. It'll be a fun weekend. I don't know if I should take gambling advice from you. You do spend a lot of time at the Mohegan Sun. That's a casino, though, right? That is, uh, yes, that is a <laughs> casino. So uh, I've learned a lot. Craig, roll the credits. All right. That being said, guys, we will see you <laughs> next week here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. For Kyle Ricky, I'm Hannah Newhouse. Producers Brian Yesowich and Craig Moore. We will see you here next week on NASCAR Coast to Coast. NASCAR Coast to Coast has been brought to you by Whelan and by Hercules Tires. NASCAR Coast to Coast can be found on MRN.com, Facebook, YouTube, or your favorite podcast provider. NASCAR Coast to Coast is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.